now that we have developed some understanding of the vectors we are in a position now that we have developed some understanding of the vectors we are in a position to deal with motion in a plane what do we mean by plane plane is something where you have got two degrees of freedom right two degrees of freedom okay what do we mean by that that means if you are at a point at a point can i move only in two directions no you can move in any direction that you want right rather in infinite directions okay but all these movements can be resolved into into two directions okay and those two directions we have already taken as the positive or negative direction of x axis or positive or negative direction of y axis that is what you mean by two degrees of freedom or that's why this is called a two dimension two dimensional plane is two dimensional so plane what 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 is the dimension of a plane it is it is a 2d right it's two dimensional okay it is two dimensional fine now till now we had been moving in a straight line when we were doing the chapter of motion in a straight line we were constrained to move in one direction along one straight line now that that restriction now goes away and we are now able to move along two straight lines and these two straight lines ensure that i can reach anywhere right anywhere on this screen we can reach any point when we were moving in a straight line okay if you are constrained along this you'll obviously not be able to come to this point right whatever you do but if if i have the freedom to move also along this or a combination of this and this then obviously i can first first start like that right i can first start like that and followed by that i come like this or or i first move like this and followed by this i move like that correct and and, and you can go anywhere any point on this space correct there is still a constraint you cannot come to a point that is above this or below this screen right okay maybe above this screen say 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 let us say put a point on your forehead you cannot come to a point on your forehead starting from here just by moving along these two directions you will require a third direction that that is perpendicular to this to this screen and then it becomes a 3d three dimensional structure and then your motion will become a motion in a space correct motion in a space right so this is what is the basic for starting with the motion in a plane let me let me kind of erase this okay now should have also raised this so so let us say i have a cartesian plane
I have a Cartesian plane, correct? And let us say I'm somewhere, I'm kind of somewhere, say, say at this point, okay, I'm at this point, okay? How do you denote this point? How do you denote this point by a position vector? What is a position vector? A position vector is a vector, okay? It has all the ingredients of a vector. So it has a magnitude, it has a direction, it is a straight line, right? But with one characteristic feature. What is that? That its tail is always at the origin. Okay? Tail always at the origin. Right? Its tail is always at the Origin. Get that? So this is a position vector. And, and where is the head? Head is head is at the head is at the point of concern. The head is at the point of concern. Okay, whatever you are trying to point at. So here, my point P is the point of concern. Okay. So there can be so many vectors. So suppose, suppose I want to kind of point it out here. Okay. Say at a point Q, then this becomes my position vector. Position vectors are represented by R. are represented by R, okay, R vector. This is exclusively preserved for position vector, right? So, so let me erase this. I, I did not want just to be here, right? So, so, now let us say this particle, this particle takes a trajectory. Like that, okay? So this particle is moving in a plane like that. Let us contrast it with what we learned earlier. If, if it was motion in a straight line, it could not have moved in such a zigzag fashion. Right? It, it would have moved only in a straight line. Correct? So this is indeed a motion, motion, the motion in a plane. Right? Now let us say, let us say, after a time delta t. Okay? After a time delta t, it reaches q, correct? It reaches q. Then what happens? Is this becomes its final position, right? So if, if this vector is denoted by R1 vector. This is a position vector, right? So that's why R and N to distinguish, say, these two vectors, I put the subscript R1 and R2. And this is, let us say, R2 vector, right? Now, if that is the case, what is the displacement? Okay? 
what is the displacement vector what is what, how had we defined the displacement it is a straight line that joins the initial position to the final position right so what happens it is this this vector is the displacement vector do we see that this is my displacement vector how do i denote it how do i denote it my my displacement vector is denoted by this pq right when we represent it by the end points we write the point that is a tail first first we write the point which is a tail and then we write the point which is a head or or or, or you can understand it this way we we the the tail of this below this kind of okay or, or uh, on the side of the tail we have the point which is which represents the tail so so it can also be represented as pq fine now what is this pq vector in terms of r1 and r2 by the law of addition of vector you see that these two vectors are head to tail right the vector r1 and the vector pq they are head to tail okay so so they are good to be added they are they are eligible for addition fine right? and we find that actually they have been added and what is the resultant how do you find the resultant of two vectors it joins the tail of the first and and to the head of the last what is the condition for addition all the vectors which are to be added should be placed arranged head to tail so r1 and pq are head to tail so r1 plus pq r1 plus pq gives me what r2 is it not so what is my pq vector pq vector is nothing but r2 minus r one right we also represent this as delta r r2 minus r1 okay fine now if this coordinate was x1 y1 and this is x2 y2 okay then you can very well understand that i can draw a perpendicular here and i know that this length will be how much how much will this length be this length this is x1 is it not so if i talk about vector this is x1 i cap is it not and this is this perpendicular vector is nothing but y1 j cap is it not because this length is y1 y1 j cap and x1 i cap plus y1 j cap is nothing but r1 vector fine so so my r1 vector is represented as 
x1 i cap plus y1 j cap similarly the r2 vector is represented as x2 i cap plus y2 j cap right understand and it is not a one off thing whenever you have the coordinates of a vector as a b okay then the position vector will always be represented as a i cap plus b j cap and, and there is no mystery to it this is why it is done right here too you can see that 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 this is nothing but this is nothing but this is nothing but y2 j cap right and, and this vector I am drawing it slightly below this so that it is visible this vector from here to here is nothing but but x2 i cap so so you can very well see that x2 i cap plus y2 j cap gives you r2 and that is why this correct you can see that after we have understood we will not keep on making these so, so and, and you say that these vectors are resolved so we will not keep on resolving these vectors right because they create a mess around fine okay so this is my displacement vector delta r right this is the white vector is the vector delta r right delta r okay Now, if that is delta r and r2 and r1 are represented like this, what is it equal to? So this is equal to, this is equal to, to, to x2 i cap plus y2 j cap minus x1 i cap plus y1 j cap right and what is that equal to this is nothing but we have been manipulating vectors like this in their rectangular form and we know that we just have to algebraically write their coefficients so x2 minus x1 i cap plus y2 minus y1 j cap right and I tend to call this as delta x i cap and this as delta y j cap right so, so what happens I call R2 minus R1 as delta R vector this is your displacement vector this is your displacement vector x2 minus x1 is equal to delta x y2 minus y1 is equal to delta y correct
so we have been able to see what our position vectors are and what my displacement vector is and what is it in terms of the coordinates of that correct once we understand this we are in a position to define what velocity is and analyze it in terms of the position vectors right <clears throat>